All right, YouTube, so guess what time it is? It's time to stab new pistons into the engine. All right, so usually this is how I get started. I just kind of want to give you guys a little bit of an idea. I've been reading QuickServe online and uh, I've got recommendations. I've talked to a lot of Cummins mechanics. Everybody seems to have a different, really, opinion, but there is a general consensus on certain ways to do things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this first piston pin out. We're going to use our inside snap ring plier rings. Get that ring out real nice and easy. You want to hang on to it when you're doing it or at least keep a finger against it so it doesn't take off on you. And we're just going to kind of roll this over. That pin should just slide right on out of there nice and easy just like that. All right, so that's all there is to it. It comes apart just that easy. Next thing I really wanted to noted, or notate is that when we pulled these apart, I don't know if you remember in the earlier video, we talked about which side was the passenger side based on the numbers. But I also went ahead and stamped the rod cap and the rod itself, just so I know number three matches both of these rods. So we're gonna go ahead and split this rod cap right now real quick. Just pull the bolts out. separate the cap. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we really need to clean the inside of the rod without the bearing in it. Very clean. You don't want any oil or anything like that in there because you don't want to end up spinning a bearing later on. So you're also going to want to do the same thing with a rod cap. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll get right back to you. All right, so what I like to do is just take a clean towel, use some uh, non-petroleum based brake cleaner. Go ahead and clean up that uh, surface right here. And what I like to do with it is I just keep cleaning it until I have no more dirt on the rag. You can see we got some dirt right here. We'll flip it over, do it again. And by doing this, you ensure that there's nothing that's going to get in there in the rod in between the rod and the rod bearing that's going to change the tolerances of the bearing when you put it on there so very important to get this really nice and clean all right so when you first get these pistons out of the um, piston kit which i got from pai i got it through atl diesel and uh, you can see there's a bunch of like uh, cardboard shavings and whatnot on here so you want to go you're going to want to go ahead and clean all this out and I just basically use an air gun for that so it's gonna get a, get a loud mute your ears we just basically want to get all this magma off the piston there before we go ahead and start putting rings on and that's really all it takes because these aren't pre-oiled or anything all right so let's go ahead and get some rings on this piston again I got these from ATL, it's a PII kit. They put these rings in the package, kind of lined up exactly the way you need them. So this is gonna be ring number one, this is gonna be ring number two, and then your oil scrapers in the uh, final position. So, of course, we're gonna start with the oil scraper ring. And most of the time there's a little printing on here, but there's not on this one. So let's just go ahead and get that oil ring on there. All right, so we got the oil ring on there. One thing I wanted to point out, they've got this like yellow mark right there. You wanna kinda make sure that's where the ring gap is. We'll worry about orientation later. There you go, now you can see it. We'll worry about orientation later, how we're gonna put it on the piston. Right now I'm just getting them on the piston, but make sure that that spring in the middle, the yellow is lined up with the ring gap. So the next one we're gonna put on is number two ring. And according to Cummins, this little bevel that's right here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, that's got to face up. And then also you could tell because there's some numbers on the ring, you're probably never going to see that. But trust me, they're there. You'll just have to look it up for your own application. This one has a little printing on it. It's one R. I don't know if you can focus on that. 
Can you see it? So that's the top ring. Let's go ahead and get that one on there. Now when you get ready to put your ring compressor on here, it's very important. Number one, none of the gaps go over the piston pin. You're gonna want them like away from the piston pin, so like right here. And then you're gonna wanna alternate them. So here's your oil ring first. That one's gonna face that way. You're gonna go with your first compression ring. You're gonna do that 180 away from it. And then your third ring is gonna be in the same position as the oil scraper ring. All right, so now I'm gonna stick the rod onto the piston. It's important to note, again, I don't know if that's something you're really gonna be able to see on the camera, but there's an arrow right here that points in the direction the piston needs to go. So that points to the front of the block. So you want to you want to remember that orientation because remember earlier we were talking about the stampings on the rod and I stamped number three and I did that on the passenger side. So we want to make sure when we're going ahead and installing the rod that we get that orientation right. So that's just something you really got to pay attention to. I got to flip it over. All right. So that's the way it's gonna go in. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use some assembly lube. Put some assembly lube, apply it liberally to the rod. Make sure my orientation is right. I'm only gonna apply assembly lube to this first journal here on the piston because it's gonna push a lot of it through. We're gonna go ahead and just lube up the first portion of this piston pin. Go ahead and drop that pin in there. And then you'll see that pin should just slide right in there. I don't know if you saw how easy that went in. And then now this, this is the fun part. I'm trying to get this clip back in there. So I got a in, set of inside snap ring pliers here. And sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle and sometimes it goes in easy. But again, keep your fingers on it. There we go. That was the easiest one I've done so far. Maybe it's because I'm cam on camera, I don't know. All right, so Let's move along to the next step. All right, so let's put the uh, rod bearings in. Now it'd be important to note that you don't want to get your fingers on the face of the rod bearings because the acids from your fingers will actually ruin the bearings. So this one here obviously has a uh, oil galley. And so you want to make sure that's going to be lined up. Also, there's a tab. I don't know if you can see that tab on the rod bearing and there's a corresponding tab in the rod itself. So you want to make sure that lines up. Once you push all that together, you're going to want to make sure that oil journal, can you see that oil journal in there? You want to make sure that's lined up. That means you're going to get oil to your rod bearings. If you don't have that oil, well, you're going to be doing this again. And then also off camera, we re-cleaned everything up really good. And we have a similar situation on the cap bearing, in it, but it doesn't have a hole in it because, well, you don't really need one. So you're gonna line that up on the cap much the same way. All right, so that's it for installing the bearings. Next, we're gonna move on to lubricating the pistons, lubricating the rod bearing and uh, in the cap and the rod and setting it up in the ring compressor. All right, so we're gonna put some assembly lube on the rod bearings here. Again, you wanna kind of apply that liberally. Oh shit, I got a bug in there. I'll edit that out. All right. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing to the rod cap. Thank you. 
once you put this lube on here, you kind of want to make, you want to move with purpose, expeditiously, as I like to say, because you don't want it to start, um, you know, collecting dust or dirt or anything. So the next thing we're going to do is oil down these uh, piston rings. It's kind of like your last final check to make sure your orientation is right. Make sure you got the rings aligned right where you want them. And I'm basically using the AMS oil that I like to use to lubricate the rings. And just put it on there liberally. Then I like to pull it out, just kind of work it in there. Once again, make sure your rings are staggered right where you want them. And then we're going to set it upside down here on the table. So now we're going to go ahead and install the ring compressor. And once again, you want to make sure your orientation is right. And what I like to do is just set it to kind of a cross pattern because that way this sits across the skinny side of the block and keeps the piston facing in the direction it needs to be in. So we go ahead and pull that pin. Flip that compressor over. Once I get it about where I want it, I go ahead and lay it on its side. By now, everything is really slippery, rightly so. So I just grab a rag, grab a little ball peen hammer, squeeze it. hard as I can and get that pin in there now the whole assembly is held in place and now it's time to go place it in the block all right y'all so here we go uh, get this piston in place this is your last chance to check your orientation make sure you got it all right so we got the arrow pointing in the right direction we got the number stamped in the right direction. We're just going to go ahead and drop this down here into the cylinder. It's that easy. Now, using a dead blow hammer, we're going to go ahead and get that thing tapped in. Coming right. We're on the number three piston. I have a dead blow. I'm going to tap easy this piston down towards Warren. Nice and easy. Let the weight of the hammer fall down on the piston. Right now, remove it about an eighth of an inch at a stroke. Warren, your fingers are clear. You good? Yep, it should be about ready to come out right now. Yep, we're about an inch and a quarter down. So, oh, it's loosening up nice and easy. Nice and easy. About two and a half inches. You good down there, brother? Yep. It's about to drop. Yep. I'm going to go to tapping with the handle. Ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's just kind of. Yep, yep. It's I nice saw and smooth. It sliding down on its yep. own. It's nice and smooth coming in. Oh, there, there it is. We go. There it is. There it is. Perfect. Uh, well, you're going to turn the crank and all that? Or? No, no. Okay. I have, I got to get the cap, bolts, all that kind of stuff. Hold on there. Slow down, coaches. Shit, I might have been filming. All right. As you can see, we've got number three in the right position. And uh, go ahead and hand me the cap for number three. Orientation. Uh, 
Yeah, you know what? There's no way I'm going to be able to film this from under here, but just know that that cap is going on there. I'm going to torque it to 52 foot pounds and then turn it 60 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, YouTube. Well, there you have it. We've got all six pistons, all six sleeves. Well, we'd hope we have all six sleeves because otherwise we wouldn't have a piston in there. But we have all six pistons and everything. There's no hang-ups, no catching. We torqued every single one of the rod bolts down to 52 pounds plus 60 degrees. And um, everything seems to be working pretty good. So that's going to do it for right now. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we appreciate you coming. Hey, go check out ATL Diesel. ATLDiesel.com. That's where I got all my parts. I got a big thing coming up for you the next video. We're going to um, check out the cylinder head they sent me that they have manufactured on their own. But ATL Diesel, they've been a great resource for me for the parts that I needed. They've got a friendly, knowledgeable staff. All you got to do is give me your serial number and they'll hook you up. All right, guys. Until next time, we'll see you all later.